Thing. Today we have another amazing guest with us who actually most recently postponed her acceptance in the UBC for January 2016 to go to Fiji and help in rural schools and teach them in 2015. She's also a dancer and you might have met her brother Richard through one of our gigs or on the show. So ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Liz Tickleman! Yay, how are you today? today? I'm great, how are you? I'm good, thank you. Good. I like your boots. I was just telling thank you, I have you. boots that are like, my lucky boots are literally exactly the same as what you have on. Um, so you're a dancer, Richard's a singer. It's pretty cool to have in the family. Lots of talent, obviously, yeah. in the family. Um, so tell me about how you started dancing and the disco dance company and how it's affected you. Well, I started dancing when I was three and I loved it. And um, when I was in grade nine, I moved to a studio called Expa Dance Co and I danced in their senior competitive program for three years and by the end of my third year I was approached by the director, Nella, and she asked me if I wanted to be a part of her separate company called Discord Dance, which was a professional dance group and I was overjoyed and I said of course I would and it was the best year ever. It was a great experience. That's amazing, yeah, yeah. and I like that like just like you and Richard aside from having a talent and a passion you mm -hmm. guys are also such really good people and I know that you went to Fiji to go and uh, teach at some schools there. Can you teach, uh, can you teach me? <laughs> Why don't you tell me a little bit about um, what inspired you to go teach in Fiji and what the entire experience was like for you? Yeah, so I always wanted to do like a service trip but I felt I wanted to go for a little bit more than a couple weeks so I could have an impact on them and they could have an impact on me. It really felt like the time was a big deal for me. So it was in my grade 12 psychology class and Latitude Global Volunteering, which is an organization which does kind of a gap year program, came and did a presentation. And at that point, I had already gotten my acceptance to UBC and I had, ac I had accepted the offer and I had was all ready to start in September and then Latitude came in and did their presentation and I was went home and I talked to my parents and said, Mom and Dad, I need to go on yes. one of these trips. I need to. It's, it's part of my passion. I got to do it. And they said, all right, so we'll make a deal. If you take the first half of the year off and do this program, you'll go to school in January. And I said, all right, perfect. And so that's how it all started. Wow, yeah. that's wonderful. Good for you. first impression of seeing all these kids? It was amazing. The first week was orientation week, so I was a little bit nervous, but I guess this is kind of expected. I wasn't really sure what I was getting myself into. And then driving up to my village, I was in the middle of the jungle, and it was really amazing seeing all the trees and the birds and the everything. So driving up to the school, it was beautiful. And there was kids on the playground, and they were all kind of a little bit whoa, what's going on? Yeah. Because they hadn't had any volunteers at that school before. We were mm -hmm. the first set, which was a really good experience. And they had never met anyone from Canada before. Nice. So I was able to teach them a lot about Canada. And my first impression was just, I was just so amazed. They were all so happy and they were so playful and so excited. And each one of them had a big smile on their face. And I was just so excited to be a part of that. So. That's wonderful. Yeah, yeah, it's always nice to see, you know, people so grateful for what they have, especially yeah. kids. It's exactly. something to be to look at. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, I know you paid for the boarding of about, was it 36 kids? Yeah. Yeah, 36 yeah. as well. That's a lot. So that they didn't have to cross or walk across this river. Yeah. Um, can you tell me a little bit more about this river and what it was like for them uh, tr transporting to school and how the kids reacted to you coming over and being like, hey, I paid for everything. Yeah. No need to worry. So uh, I had done a bit of fundraising before I left because I wanted to be able to go to the school and offer if they needed books or school supplies or anything they needed. I wanted to be able to help out and contribute. So when I got there, I talked to the head teacher who was also my host dad. And he had let me know that I was able to buy the school a new printer, which was really nice. And that mm. uh, they used $1,000 to pay for the school boarding fees. And I said, that would be wonderful. 
So there, our school is placed in between two villages. So we're on one side, and then one village called Balagambelo is on one, and then the other one called Saru is way, way up mm -hmm. in the other one. So from Bello village, it's about an hour walk, and you have to cross the river once. But from Saru, which is all the way up at the top, it will take probably about three or four hours and you have to cross the river over 20 times. Oh my God. And the river is deep, like it can go up past your knees. So yeah. some of the kids that were in grade one, grade two would be walking by themselves and get up at four o'clock in the morning to wow. get to school on time. And so I was just amazed that the kids would actually get up and do it. Yeah. And it was, I was, that, that would never happen, you know, in Canada. Mm -hmm. So that really made an impact on me. And the fact that I was able to let them stay in the boarding house so they didn't have to do that made a lot of impact on me. And so when they told the kids, they actually told them that it was from an anonymous donor. And so it was really nice seeing their genuine appreciation. Yeah sitting there and watching them tell them that they've all been paid for and none of them would be evicted from the boarding house and they didn't they reacted in a way where they were just so grateful and they were all like oh my goodness like no way and all the yeah. parents were so grateful and they none of them knew it was me up until the last couple weeks that i was there Aww. so it was nice to see that it was very genuine it's very sweet yeah. yeah i think definitely just you know how you said most kids wouldn't do it here in canada in north america we have all these privileges mm -hmm. and all of that for education so we take it for granted and then when you see people in other countries and that's why it's nice to look at you know how easily you enjoy that these kids are in other countries yeah it makes you more grateful for all the things that you have in it does yeah. the little things definitely <laughs> yeah, yeah. different projects that you've worked on. Can you tell me a little bit about some of the most important projects in your life and also Global Smile? Well, I've done a couple fundraisers for the Cancer and the Breast Cancer Society um, before. My most memorable one was probably the fashion show fundraiser I did with Boutique Visanji. It was um, probably the most work, <laughs> but it was a lot of fun seeing it all come together with all the models and everyone just had a great time. So that was probably my, <laughs> probably my most memorable. Um, but the Global Smile project kind of started my volunteer partner, uh, volunteer partner Ella, who's from Australia, uh, kind of started when I was able to pay for the boarding fees for all of the kids and it was only for one semester. So her and I were kind of thinking like, it would be kind of cool if we could be able to keep this going and be able to pay for a whole year. And it's only it's only $25 for one kid for a semester. And people back home would pay $25 for a shirt, let alone for a whole semester of education. So we were staying in our room one day and we were thinking, what can we do? What can we start? And the Global Smile Project was kind of created and yeah so we worked on it while we were there and we did a lot of filming on the school ground and told all the kids what we were going to do. We wrote a formal letter to the head teacher asking him if it was okay and he gave us permission and then we called all of the parents for the boarding children and asked for permission and they were all so overjoyed yeah. and so it became a really really fun project to work on and by the time Ella went home first and she started putting together and setting up the Facebook page and then when I got home we started working together nice. and now all of the kids are sponsored which is great Aww. and yeah for the whole year. That's really good nice. yeah it's nice to see that you're you know going out there and uh, leading a legacy for people to yeah. follow and taking care of the <laughs> world because I feel like you know as people we should also not only take care of ourselves but everyone else around us. Um, what would you say 
are the biggest challenges though that you faced with you know fundraisers and traveling to Fiji and helping out everyone else? Um, the biggest challenge would I think just keep it going like it's easy to have an idea and be really excited about it at first but the difficult part would be like keeping it going and realize that it is a lot of hard work to organize something and set it up and have the perseverance to keep going and making it work so yeah but all all in all it's worth it in the end so definitely really yeah and do you plan on maybe using your dance background in the future for any fundraisers um i mean it's an option definitely i did have a couple uh, ideas putting on maybe like a like a talent show kind of that would be really really fun but i think it's nice to incorporate kind of like all the things i'm doing now especially with school and stuff so yeah. Wonderful. And especially working, um, as you said, in school and going to school and then teaching as well at school. So you've been on both sides now. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think you're going to consider teaching in the future? <laughs> Funny enough, this whole experience made me realize that I do not want to be a teacher <laughs> at all. Yeah. Props to any teachers out there because it's very hard. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I've gained a lot of respect for teachers and professors. Immense, good job for them. Yes. You know? <laughs> but no, it's definitely not a career path that I'd love to take. But I definitely enjoyed my three months. It was very eye opening and very amazing. So wonderful. Yeah. And what do you hope to do in the future? Um, currently, I'm looking to work more on the business side with people. So I'm looking to go maybe into economics or business or maybe social work. So those are the kind of oh. courses I'm taking. At university very nice. Right very yeah. social work, especially. Um, <laughs> so where can we find out more about you online on social media and also the projects that you're doing? <laughs> well, uh, the Global Smile Project does have a Facebook page and as well as an Instagram account. So you can follow those. Uh, so far, that's all we have right now. We're working on possibly putting up a website, but any other uh, inquiries or want to contact us, you can contact Ella and I at our personal emails or at our Global Smile Facebook page. Okay, and yeah. what is your uh, Global Smile handles on uh, Instagram and Facebook? It's just the Global Smile Project. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Wonderful. <laughs> Alright, so we're going to be back after a quick break, but stay tuned and keep watching. This is Every a Thing.
just do a lot of like all of the money that we get basically goes directly to the Mount of Todd Legacy Foundation mm -hmm. and that is what funds all the programs for kids with learning disabilities and youth with mental health struggling in the communities. I mean, you find bullying in every aspect of life, no matter what, but sports, it's like an, it's an outlet for kids is what it is, essentially. So we're back and we're gonna gonna have some fun now, have some uh, some workshop time. <laughs> um, and uh, I'm assuming you saw Richard's episode, right? I did. Yes. <laughs> and there is that quick fire part. Okay. So we're gonna do that with you. So just to, to recap, quick fire. Basically, I'm gonna ask you nine questions in All 40 right. seconds. I want you to say the first thing that comes to your head. I was gonna say 40 seconds. She's like, yeah, I'll write. 40 seconds. Oh god. You know? <laughs> <laughs> that shift. <laughs> just finished exams. My brain's like. Ah. Okay. All right. Are you ready? <laughs> yes. Countess and princess. Three, two, one. Your favorite pet peeve is? I... A bite nails? I don't know. <laughs> Top three items in your survival kit. A, what? Top three items in your survival kit. A flashlight, a lighter, and band-aids? <laughs> Crayons can be scary because... They don't erase. <laughs> People should watch the movie The Notebook because... The Cry? Your favorite TV show. Uh, oh, Little Big Shots. <laughs> yeah, you will survive in the desert if... Have an umbrella. You will. You're willing to. Ah! You're willing to exchange your cell phone for a computer. Uh, you will sing a duet with your brother if. Uh, I'm better at singing than him. <laughs> you dance in the rain because. <laughs> I I don't know. <laughs> Yay! We just finished in time. <laughs> okay. So workshop time. Okay. Alrighty. So basically, we have 15 seconds to complete everything that we both have, and apparently there are questions. So Hello. for each question. Like, if I read out a question, you have to tell me five things that answer that question. Oh, okay. And then we switch. So we'll just keep taking turns, me and you, me and you. So we'll just rock, paper, scissors. Um, okay. Who goes first, winner or loser? Winner. Okay. Okay. Okay, so you go first. Yeah, so okay. you'd ask the first question. So we have a minute to do them, so we can okay. relax more now. Okay. Okay, ready? Count us in, princess! Ready? Okay. No. Types of cake. Um, red velvet, cheesecake, Oreo, chocolate, tuxedo. Um, things you do in Disneyland. Uh, go on rides, see the characters, um, eat, uh, yeah. go to the water park, sleep. Okay, <laughs> that works. Oh, uh, musical instruments. Uh, guitar, bass, violin, piano, your voice. Um, things that you always need in your bag. Uh, um, your wallet, your phone, um, car keys, uh, money, and a mirror. Perfect. <laughs> dog breed. Um, Rottweiler, Pomeranian, what's the hot dog one? A Dachshund, <laughs> a Husky, and they um, a Poodle. Um, months that only have 30 days. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> January, February, March, April, May, June, July, September, September, September. <laughs> Uh, animal sounds. Um, ooh, moo, meow, woof. <laughs> that was unintended. <laughs> uh, celebrity crushes. Oh, uh, <laughs> Zac Efron, oh. Channing Tatum, oh. Ryan Gosling, oh. uh, uh, Ryan Reynolds. Oh. <laughs> Is that five? One more. Um, oh, no. Um, oh. <laughs> Yes, there okay, <laughs> that works. Okay, uh, shows you binge watch. Um, how to get away with murder, friends, uh, the hundred, um, uh, chopped, and diners, drive-ins, and dives. Um, celebrities that start with the letter J. <laughs> Justin Bieber, <laughs> Janae Aiko, uh, <laughs> wow, that's a lot harder than I thought. Um, J J Justin Timberlake, um, <laughs> can I pass? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, no, okay. Fruits. Um, uh, t uh, uh, apple, orange, strawberry, coconut, banana. Ooh, drinks from Starbucks. Um, oh, chai tea latte. <laughs> um, caramel macchiato, frappuccino. 
uh, coffee and uh, the lemonade. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> oh, we did it! <laughs> <laughs> I was kind of scary, uh, but that was worth it, I would say, yeah. Um, so thank you again, once again, Liz, for coming in. And thank I have you. a star for you to Lovely. sign. Thank you. Yay! <laughs> Be sure that you check out her social media and global smile as well. And until next time, I'll see you here on Every Yay, thank you. Thank you. to be your number one, number one, one, oh, when I see you, I see the sun break through the sky, got my eyes, eyes, on the prize, prize, oh, when I see you, there's no view, better than this, come and give me a kiss, 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 all the troubles goodbye, I'll be your desire, be your dream, to be your number one, your A lot of like all of the money that we get basically goes directly to the amount of Todd Legacy Foundation mm -hmm. and that is what funds all the programs for kids with learning disabilities and youth with mental health struggling in the communities. I mean you find bullying in every aspect of life no matter what but sports is like an, it's an outlet for kids is what it is essentially. <laughs> Every snowflake, we all fall but get back up at our own rate. We're all strong and we determine now we're own fate. So get out there and love yourself and you'll be okay. You're beautiful, I just hope that you can see it too. Any dream you have, I just hope that you see it through. Life is short, so dream big and name way past the moon. Just remember, as you do that, I believe in you. Choose to smile every day. putting themselves on the line with uh, live performance and courageous uh, uh, performance of the singer and the old performance. The winner is... Snowflake. I cried during this one. And everybody, not just for you, but everybody else who participated, it was just really great. And I everyone, so thank you.